Welcome to part two of What's New in Minerals, where uh, a large group of people contribute new finds seen during the past year. Uh, Jeff sort of does what people bring to him. We go out and try and find the new items. Uh, Jim Nizimoff uh, helps me uh, with the first section. Uh, then Mark Jacobson, Jacobson covers uh, the Rocky Mountains and Southwest, Ray McDougall, Canada, and worldwide. I want to thank uh, many contributors, and most especially Dave Bunk, John Cornish, Jordi Fabre, Ibrahim Jamil, Mike Shannon, Dan Weinrich, David Ziga. They all sent in photographs and granted permission. In June of 2020, the two largest tanzanite crystals discovered uh, were, were uh, recovered in Marilani. Uh, the largest one was 9.4 kilos, which is quite big. Uh, the second largest was 5.8 kilos. These were deemed to be uh, treasures by the Tanzanian government, and they were purchased directly from the miners for $3.3 million. And it's unclear what they're going to do with them, or at least it's, it's unreported at this time. The Argyle mine in Australia uh, closed. This produced... Uh, almost all the wonderful pink diamonds that, that you read about. It was the largest producer of diamonds by volume uh, and was single-handedly responsible, or partly responsible, with, uh, the for the global oversupply of diamonds. Um, many of them were very low quality brown diamonds uh, and they tended to be small. They made an economic decision to crush the ore to 15 millimeters so no large diamonds came from the mine. In New Hampshire, the government pit is for sale or, or the property directly adjacent to the government pit. This is a famous mineral locality. The, the uh, soil and bedrock here is a, a rotted granite that's fairly easy to dig through the, the granular material until you find solid areas which are usually indicative of pocket zones. And this location was famous for smoky quartz on microcline and uh, colorless to slightly bluish topaz crystals. The Milpias mine is closed. It closed in summer of 2020. Uh, so all of these great minerals that have been found there over the years, uh, most notably the azurite and the malachite uh, and the cuprites, uh, and most recently the olivinites, uh, will no longer be uh, available so uh, you might want to if you don't have one now's the time to, to grab grab specimens from that mine this was supposed to be a large section of local finds by uh, small-time diggers in New England but I've had to cut it for time uh, in order to fit the uh, schedule for the Rochester symposium this year but the highlight of the year that I, I wanted to share was a, a private dig uh, where somebody found these wonderful tabular calcite crystals. Um, they are very reminiscent of the uh, calcite found at the road cut in Shelburne, Massachusetts. It is not the same location. But the point is that the, uh, the hobby of digging in New England uh, is quite healthy. There's a whole crew of guys out there doing uh, a, a lot of uh, weekends out in the field and they're finding good minerals. The Havy Quarry in Maine uh, found this nice uh, one centimeter purple fluorapatite crystal on a matrix of hydroxyl herderite and an elbite from a pocket in April 2020. Uh, they also got a pocket of uh, many quartz crystals up to 30 centimeter with hydroxyl herderite crystals uh, up to uh, 1.5 centimeters from a pocket in July. The, uh, they also found a, an amethyst pocket, which is relatively uncommon for the quarry, uh, with uh, crystals to 6 centimeters, though uh, this uh, zoned crystal... Uh, is 10.3 centimeters tall with a uh, amethyst uh, uh, final overgrowth. The big news in Maine is uh, John Sassi over in Stoneham, Maine is uh, working a brand new uh, group of prospects uh, on uh, private land. It's closed to collectors. This is a commercial 
uh, dig and he's uh, got two locations. The red carpet mine is producing uh, amethyst crystals uh, with uh, smoky zones and uh, often with with inclusions uh, crystals to 1.2 centimeters in uh, in groups and clusters uh, not unlike the uh, amethyst out of uh, nearby Deer Hill um, interesting stuff and he, he's got quite a few specimens in his other prospect, the Magna Futura mine, he's getting some quite impressive uh, almondine garnets in clusters and singles. Uh, trapezohedral form. This is just as it came out, just washed. Um, nice, nice pieces. Uh, I can't wait to get up there and, and see these in person. Um, and he is. Uh, uh, Continuing, uh, he's got something else in the works. He's uh, another barrel locality in the works. And the Magna Futura mine is uh, producing other minerals. Uh, in Washington, uh, the old Beaver Valley quarry, uh, known for micros mostly uh, and small pockets, uh, they opened a new excavation on the back side of the hill. John Cornish found a 45 centimeter pocket, which is very large for the for the locality that produced uh, quartz and calcite with some apophyllite amethyst and quartz epimorphs after calcite on the right hand side you can see um, some sort of stalactitic uh, quartz over a uh, green jasper uh, on the left you can see a, a photograph of one of the pillow basalt type uh, cavities but uh, most Notable from the find was a large uh, pocket with calcite crystals uh, with specimens to 30 centimeters, which is, uh, uh, John reports, quite large for the, the location. So calcite collectors uh, can start uh, salivating. Uh, this is a druse of colorless quartz uh, with the matrix showing through from beneath. And you, again, you get a sense of the size. Uh, over at uh, Tower Hill area in Washington, uh, Melanophlogite, uh, based on morphology, uh, they have sent samples out to uh, University of Arizona and waiting for uh, uh, confirmation, but it would be the first uh, for Washington, I believe. Um, collected by Nick Carlson from vesicles uh, in, in a, a brecciated andesite. Um, they got over 100 specimens, and so there's enough that uh, hopefully they'll, they'll show up uh, among collectors with uh, crystals to th uh, three millimeters in, in cavities up to about an inch, just under an inch. Uh, at uh, a site in, uh, in Washington collected by uh, Taya Stender, uh, it was an outcrop on public lands. Uh, you know, again, they don't want to reveal the location because uh, it's still being worked. But uh, they found an exposure of, uh, of selenite crystals uh, up to a meter thick and five meters long, and uh, they recovered 300 uh, specimens up to nine centimeters, which is pretty big. Uh, there's a uh, delicate pink color in the right hand one. I'm not sure if that's a, a reflection of the color of the specimen or uh, whether it's a function of incandescent lighting used to illuminate the specimen. Uh, over in Ferry County, uh, Max and Maddie Larson are working the uh, Walter Hudson claim. This is uh, some nice looking stuff. It, these are uh, fluorites over quartz. Uh, they hit a 120 centimeter pocket. Uh, on Facebook, it's being sold by the Mazama Mine Company. And I've got quite a few pictures. It's sort of a cubo-octahedral habit. Um, and uh, over an earlier generation of uh, quartz crystals to eight centimeters. Some of the quartz crystals exhibit tessin habit. I don't know if you can see the, the, um, the tapered crystal habit uh, on this one. Um, and uh, again, these are, are available uh, from 
d the dealer uh, selling on Facebook. A uh, field collector uh, in the Western Caf Cascades uh, came up with a, a one-time find of of copper secondary minerals, uh, really unidentified, you know, chrysocolla or calcite, it's un unclear, but uh, very colorful uh, uh, rosettes of, of this unidentified blue mineral that, that's been sent out to uh, be identified over uh, quartz crystals. And uh, some, they, they really are quite showy and it's a beautiful con. Uh, these, again need to be tested uh, but apparently tourmaline and quartz this is from uh, King County Washington uh, they hit a, uh, a 90 by 90 by 120 centimeter cavity uh, with transparent to translucent cr uh, quartz crystals to eight centimeters um, and they have this overgrowth overgrowth of fibrous uh, acicular uh, minerals that uh, they appear black but uh, with Magnification can be seen to be transparent green, and it's possibly a tourmaline uh, in the tourmaline group. Uh, here you get a better sense. It's it's uh, very familiar to uh, so, uh, some of the uh, fibrous tourmalines that come out of Brazil. Uh, the, the primary crystals uh, are to 10 centimeters, but then they're 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 overgrown with a second generation of smaller crystals. Dave Bunk is uh, offering a small group of sulfur crystals or sulfur, sulfur specimens from the Kilauea volcano in Hawaii. Uh, this is a 10.5 centimeter specimen across um, with just brilliant luster and, and vivid color. Dave reports that uh, their source was John Bly, and uh, it was a one-time find, and the uh, they were collected outside of the park, so they are in fact legal, um, and quite showy to look at. You can even see, uh, as you may know, sulfur is uh, is uh, doubly refractive, like calcite, and the uh, the clean uh, internal transparency. Uh, allows you to actually see some of that, uh, see the double images here. What was hoped to be a great new find of Lovelockite from Mina Huela uh, is now a little bit in doubt. These first surfaced uh, in March of 2020 from Marshall Sussman, uh, and they were reported to be Lovelockite. They sent the specimens, or a specimen, to the University of Arizona for testing. Uh, first, it was confirmed as Ludlockite, and then another test came back as Carabibite. Panzer thought they were Carabibite, uh, so they are still undetermined at this point. If it were Ludlockite, that would be, I believe, a new uh, species for the for the mine. Um, but there's there's more news, and I'm sure we'll we'll have a follow up uh, next year when it's finally determined what the species is. Dan Weinrich came up with a, a new find or new specimens of hexagonal prismatic calcite crystals from Guangzhou, Fujian, China. Uh, he reports that somebody must be going into an abandoned mine and collecting these specimens. This is a specimen that's 10 centimeters tall. And here are two other specimens, the one on the left, 8.5 centimeters diagonally and the specimen on the right is 13 centimeters tall. Jordi Fabre came up with some nice twinned diaspore crystals. The uh, twin plane is running vertically through the center of the crystals and they show a color change in daylight. It's a remarkable green and then in incandescent light uh, you can see uh, a color shift and uh, the zoning becomes apparent. Some of the crystals, there's a very obvious twin plane visible in the terminations. Um, these showed up at the virtual Samari show uh, in 2020. Um, it's a new morphology for the diaspora from, from Turkey, and uh, was, uh, which was prominently featured in a recent mineralogical record 
uh, magazine. Uh, Jory Fabre also got a number of these uh, uh, chrysocolla specimens that grew over an earlier generation of quartz crystals. This is 6.4 centimeters high. He had uh, he has the location as the Tentadora mine in Ica Pro, uh, Department, Peru. Uh, and these were at the uh, Samari show, uh, the virtual Samari show. And he had a number of specimens. Here's a 6.6 .6 centimeter specimen. Ibrahim uh, Jamil at Kyber Minerals has a nice new find of zeolites, mostly scolocyte specimens from the Dre Sap Sha uh, area of Vietnam. Uh, this is an 11 centimeter specimen with uh, scolocyte crystals lining the, the cavities. Uh, he has a lot of these specimens available. This is a 9.6 centimeter specimen. Um, here's another scolocyte, 7.9 centimeters across. Uh, but the other minerals occur there. It's, it's almost like uh, the New Jersey zeolites. Uh, you have calcite and prenite. The, the, uh, the prenite specimen on the upper right is 12 centimeters across, uh, and the uh, scolocyte and calcite below is uh, 7.9 centimeters across. Uh, Ibrahim also had uh, a large group of uh, ferberite crystals from the San Pedro mine in, in Potosi, uh, Bolivia. This is a 5.1 centimeter uh, cross specimen. Uh, some big crystals came out. This is a, a 700 gram crystal, um, 6.2 centimeters across, and cluster 7.6 centimeters across. From Morocco, I'm not even going to try and pronounce the location was a new pocket of uh, floater gold specimens. Uh, these were uh, found uh, associated with quartz and calcite. Many dealers have them. Anton Watzel at AW Minerals. Uh, Jordi Fabre has some. Spear for Minerals has them. Uh, they are uh, quite large and dramatic. And the association of uh, the, or the, the occurrence of the gold specimens uh, in the quartz is seen as confirmation that these are not lab grown, which you would expect from anything uh, from Morocco because they're so good at it. Um, and so these do appear to be natural. Here are a group of specimens from Jordi Fabre. Uh, and you can see the one on the on the left is very similar to a copper. I, I would, <laughs> the skeptic in me uh, and the, the ability of the Moroccans to fake minerals, I, I sure would like to scrape the surface and make sure there's not a, a copper specimen underneath that's been gold plated. I'm of course kidding, but, but with anything from Morocco or China, you really have to be skeptical. Uh, Jordi also had a new find of rose quartz crystals from Juan Cayo District, Peru, uh, with uh, uh, sort of uh, stellate groups of lustrous uh, pink uh, rose quartz crystals. The, the one on the left is uh, 5.9 centimeters tall. The one on the right is 4.2 centimeters tall. Um, and these were at the uh, virtual show, the virtual Tucson uh, back in February. And here's some other clusters. You sort of get a sense of, of uh, there are larger crystals uh, that were the core that were overgrown by the rose quartz crystals. Uh, Jordi also had a uh, new find of sphalerite, galena, dolomite from Zalija mine, Morocco. These were at the virtual Munich in 2020. Uh, this is a 16 centimeter specimen. Here are two specimens uh, also from Jordi. Uh, this find was published in the Reña Mineral uh, in the January, February 2020 issue. Um, and the spalarites are notably uh, quite, quite uh, showy and, and good sized specimens.
Jordi Fabre came up with uh, fluorapite, fluorapatite crystals from Penascara, Portugal that have an unusual elongated morphology. Uh, the uh, fluorapatite crystals from Penascara normally are, are tabular, um, short, stubby prisms, uh, more, more disc-like. Uh, and these were uh, an elongated form uh, in intersecting groups, uh, often with uh, uh, the appearance of being a, uh, a bundle of many crystals that grew together um, with simple flat terminations. And uh, these were uh, first shown at the uh, virtual summary show in 2020. Dan Weinrich had these Colwazite pseudomorphs after cuprite from Kukenda, Democratic Republic of Congo, that came out in late 2020. They were originally sold as malachite pseudomorphs after cuprite, but analysis came back later to be Colwazite, so he uh, had to correct some of the early labels that went out before the analysis. You can see that they started as distinct crystals of cuprite that were then replaced or, or coated with Colwazite. Dan Weinrich had these uh, chrysocolla pseudomorphs that are coated with quartz um, from the uh, Tenki Fungoruma uh, Kolwezi Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, the uh, original mineral was a, a bladed, uh, elongated blade. You can see the cross section uh, where they've broken. You can you can see that there's a malachite core. So there was a bladed mineral. It pseudomorphed into malachite, then was coated with a thin blue coating of chrysocolla, and then overgrown with druzy quartz, uh, giving them a, a sugar-like uh, coating or a luster. Um, I personally believe that the bladed uh, original mineral was azurite. Uh, many people think that uh, the original mineral was barite, uh, but uh, I've seen just as many bladed azurite crystals as I have seen bladed barite crystals, and it's more likely to, to have a pseudomorph from azurite to malachite than it is to have a pseudomorph go from barite to malachite. Jordi Fabre reported a new find in January of 2020 from the Las Cruces mine in the Andalusia area of Spain of calcasite crystals associated with uh, tenantite, pyrite, and geraliite in clusters to uh, 2.2 centimeters on the upper right and a cluster to 0.9 centimeters high on the bottom middle. And here uh, on the right is a large uh, 1.6 centimeter, 16 millimeter uh, single crystal of calcasite. And you can see the, uh, the mixture of the other minerals uh, in the uh, late growth on the bottom left. David Ziga reports a new find of morganite pink barrel crystals from a unnamed mine in Virgin de Lapa, Brazil. These are true pink color, not the salmon uh, off color that has been uh, available in recent years. Many of them have uh, concentric zoning, often with aquamarine core zones. And I'll conclude with the latest and greatest uh, from Tucson that just uh, was introduced about a week ago. I believe it was on the 8th, uh, that uh, Mike Shannon and Malcolm Alter digging at a new location uh, in the Alamo District over in La Paz County, Arizona, uh, found a new uh, wolfenite locality. The, uh, they introduced these at, at the Tucson, uh, like I said, on, on April 8th, and they sold out the entire find within uh, two days. Uh, it was, uh, it's an unnamed prospect that that will remain nameless until they feel that they've worked it out. They do not want a bunch of other people going in there. Uh, and so we have uh, uh, yellow-orange uh, mimetite uh, over fluorite in this instance. And 
Here are some thumbnails mounted up, uh, single blade specimens of the wolfenite. And then we have uh, the, the fluorite range from blue to purple uh, and uh, in octahedrons up, uh, up to 25 millimeters across uh, with this very beautiful contrasting uh, overlay of the orange wolfenite, quite, quite stunning. And that concludes my portion of What's New in Minerals Part 2. I want to thank everyone that uh, granted me permission to use their photos. And if you would like your photos in next year's presentation, please feel free to email me, email me throughout the year. Uh, just uh, do me the favor and, and don't wait until April to send photos. Uh, I, I really need some advanced time to do preparation. And make sure you send the facts that, that go along with the photos, or at least whatever information you're willing to share. Okay, thanks everybody.